Now we're going to look at first exercise 14b and then exercise 15b for chapter 16. Both of these deal with allocating overhead. I want to draw your attention though to the page that you're seeing right now. This page is in the chapter 16 folder for course materials and it's titled Traditional Approach to Overhead Allocation. On this page, I describe how the overhead allocation process fits in with the management cycle, of planning, performing, evaluating, and communicating that we covered in the last chapter. So you'll notice it's really divided up into three steps, and these three steps take place across the management cycle. I also explain here how each step fits in with the two exercises, 14 and 15, that we're about to use, excuse me, about to do. And so I would just encourage you to take a look at this, maybe print out this page or have it available as you're working on the exercises because you will find it a useful, helpful reference. Let's go then to exercise 14B. In 14B, it says the overhead costs that Luca Industries Incorporated used to compute its overhead rate for the past year are as follows. So starting in chapter 15, we talked about what costs might be included as overhead. These are indirect manufacturing costs. They're costs that we incur only because we are making the product, but we can't trace them to a specific product or batch of products. So we know they need to become part of the product cost but we cannot trace it directly to the product as we do with direct materials and direct labor. So what we have are the values from last year, and these include a whole category of stuff, $440,000 worth. We have property taxes are 16,000, another zero there, and then depreciation on the machinery, 54,000. So our total overhead costs for last year, $510,000. And you can see that last year we incurred 50,000 machine hours. So this company has chosen to use machine hours as its cost basis or its allocation base. So each product, each time we are producing product, we are going to be assigning overhead to the cost of that product based on the number of machine hours. So a product that takes more machine hours is going to get more overhead assigned to the cost. And so the cost per hour for last year was $10.20 per machine hour. If a job incurred 10 machine hours, then it would be allocated $102 in overhead in addition to the direct materials and direct labor. Now we're told that for the next year, that whole big category of costs are expected to increase by 20%. Now you'll notice the column is headed next year's percentage. So if it's going to be a 20% increase, then next year's cost would be 120%, all of last year's cost plus an additional 20%. So I simply multiplied 120% by the total from last year. You want to be careful with that in the homework problem also because the homework problem, the headings on the columns are a little bit um, misleading, we'll say. Let's see, what else does it say? Mis miscellaneous overhead is expected to increase by 20%. That's what we just did. Depreciation should increase by 40%. So next year's depreciation would be 140% of the total from last year. And then property tax is expected to increase by only um, 10%. So 110% of last year's. Now we can total our three costs. And where last year's overhead was only 510,000, this, this year is expected to be 621,200. But you'll notice they also tell us that we expect to work more machine hours. So last year the machine hours was 50,000, but that's expected to increase by 12,120. And so this year we're expected to work 62,120 hours. And that makes our predetermined or budgeted overhead allocation rate $10 per machine hour. Even though our costs are going up anywhere from 10 to 40%, 
our machine hours are also going up and so the actual cost per machine hour is coming down. So this is all done in the planning phase. This is the predetermined overhead rate. It's calculated before we actually start making the product.